Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbin. When I was a kid, I remember my mom was up when I got up, and she was still up and working hard when I went to bed. No matter what issue came up, she seemed to have the right solution and knew exactly what to do. But is there a toll to working hard to keeping it all together as a mom? My guests on today's show have some advice on this topic. Now, from left to right and back to front, Robin Cor Cornoyer, my tongue's not working today, <laughs> is a mother of three boys and a nurse with her own practice. Jean Labins is a mother of one girl and a boy and is an executive coach. Celia Rose is a mother of twin boys and runs a business holding mock injuries for attorneys. Linda Spavacek is a mother of two boys and is an executive coach and speaker. And Maureen Wolf is a mother of one girl and three boys and works in town government. Now together, along with Karen Garvin, Leo Jacobs, and Bonnie Quinlan, they are the authors of the new self-published book, Just Ordinary Moms, a book of true stories by moms for moms. It was published in April 2013. Welcome back to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Holding it all together. Mm. Oh. <laughs> moms become the anchor for the American family, you mm -hmm. know, and we go back many, many generations. And, you know, as I remember my great great grandmother was in charge. She knew everything, where everything was doing. The kind of grandfather was just off doing something outdoors, you know, <laughs> and it was carried on generations. And then it's like, oh, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. <laughs> and I'm speaking as a man, but, you know, we get into parenthood and go, Hey, it's not the same. How come they made it look so easy oftentimes? So uh, do you, you have an entry from your book that you want to share that kind of deals with this topic. Would you like to share it? We do. And I think, you know, there's just so much of a perfection syndrome and sort of this facade about how perfect everything is that we put forward. So this story is actually about what's really going on inside the house. <laughs> and it's called Just an Ordinary Day. I'm just going to read a couple paragraphs. It is the first day of school ever. First grader Corey watches out the window for the bus. Adorably dressed in preppy blue and white striped shirt and khaki shorts, his hair slicked back like dad's. His backpack full of supplies he excitedly picked out at the drugstore is at his side. Wow, he's actually ready and on time for the bus. The baby Chris starts to cry and I walk around the kitchen breastfeeding him while helping three-year-old Robert get ready for nursery school. Thank goodness today is someone else's turn to carpool because it's not even 8 a.m. and things are getting a little hectic around here. Bus is here, yells Corey. And so we all walk the new school bay out to the bus. I smile, wave goodbye, and then turn around, take Robert's hand, and start to cry. He looks up at me and says with beautiful brown eyes, Don't worry, Mommy. He be back. We dawdle on our way back to the house when suddenly I realize Robert hasn't eaten yet and he's going to be pecked up in 15 minutes and he only eats peanut butter and jelly. Don't judge, it's all he will eat. He's such a slow eater he barely gets in two bites before the ride comes. Chris starts to cry again and I get a whiff of a big nasty diaper and then I put him down for a nap. <laughs> all is quiet for a minute and I think about grabbing a cup of tea when the phone rings. It's the mom who drove Robert to school this morning. When I dropped off the kids at preschool, the teacher was looking for the snacks. I guess it was your turn today. Just thought you ought to know. <laughs> she hung up the phone. So that's exactly the way it is. You're just trying to juggle everything, and of course you forget the one big important thing that meant something to the whole entire class. <laughs> Darn. Now, now, even as a dad, I've had those moments. I, I oftentimes find myself alone with the grandkids mm -hmm. or, or my young uh, children. And I remember one time I had my granddaughter and I was trying to get some work done and I, she was supposed to be taking a nap and I had borrowed a neighbor's little uh, portable bed uh, crib thing, portable mm -hmm. thing, and I just checked on her because I heard her talking and then I walked in there and she had, uh, had taken the contents of her diaper and smeared it all uh, <laughs> around the mesh netting of my neighbor's uh, nice. portable bed in her, <laughs> in her hair <laughs> and on her face. She looked like wow. Indian paint and she goes, look at me, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. oh, and you know, no. and I'm looking at her going, I remember going, 
I gotta hold you just don't together. even want to pick her up. You know? Know? Yeah. <laughs> but she's just a child. You can't get mad at her. You know? yeah. 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 Or maybe you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for me, it was an intricate operation. I had to clean one thing at a time, you know, yeah. clean her first. And then at one point, she's, uh, she's real little and she's hopping like a frog around mm. the bed and she's going, ribbit, 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 <laughs> like a frog. She goes, look at me, Grandpa, I'm a frog. And I'm scrubbing. And I looked at her going, she has no concept. No, no. Of, you no. know. You're working hard. That's yeah. right. She's having fun. Mm -hmm. So our kids have no concept of what we do. Right. And so when it comes to mom's juggling, what, what kind of advice do you like to give from your perspective <laughs> as a mom? Well, maybe I could be one to answer this one from the corporate perspective, because I think I started out by thinking I could run like Kids Incorporated as my mothering <laughs> style and that everything was going to run like clockwork and we would have decisions made and delegating all the different tasks of who was going to do what and I would tell you though that I think there was probably a point where I sort of gave over to the first step you know if, if you know step one I admitted my life was <laughs> unmanageable <laughs> and I was powerless <laughs> and if at that point I think I finally let go of all that and, and honestly I think for most of us moms it that you get to that point where you just realize that some of this has got to be let it go some of it's got to be it's really okay if the house isn't clean today or the beds aren't made today or that you know whatever I haven't uh, gotten dressed yet well mm -hmm. I've had, yeah. had yeah. many That's of okay. those get moments yeah. many of those you know as a corporate gal trying to also juggle twins and all the other aspects of life I you know I would thought I had it made when I could teach my kids not to cross into my office mm -hmm. that and they would stand there at the office door and look in <laughs> we want snacks you know and <laughs> I'm like I want this deal <laughs> so but sometimes the deal is really not as important as the snacks and making those decisions with those little employees in mind was better so I, a, a point that you're making that I like is, you know, kind of pick your battles. Yeah. You got to let things mm -hmm. go, and it's so hard, mm -hmm. especially when uh, if you tend to be an oldest child and you want everything just right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it's so hard to let some of that go. What about what about feeling overwhelmed as a parent? What about the fact that we get stressed, we feel overwhelmed? What, what kind of suggestions do you have for moms when they get to the point of feeling overwhelmed? Just gotta take a break. Do something fun. You know, mm -hmm. ask your kids, "What do you want to do?" And I think now that my children are older, those are the things that they remember. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the little things. Mm -hmm. And we went, to, we've been to Disney a million times. They don't even remember that. They remember making cookies in the kitchen, and it was just a disaster. So just like <laughs> take a break and do something fun. Yeah, and find Great. other moms too. That's how we all met. You know, with the book club or, or like-minded activities that you just. Uh, sort of can get away from your kids for a little bit and have adult time I think helps mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about more about that in the next segment mm -hmm. too which is not always a great thing to have other moms around because you have to put up that facade about well, the, the ones you <laughs> want to be with. <laughs> 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 the ones you tell the truth with. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. how we um, even came about because yeah, we, we really found tell that the truth. in yeah. writing the stories was go going a little bit deeper and telling yeah. each other the truth was such a relief valve. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. and, and I think sometimes we have to just, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the worst exactly. isn't really the worst. You hope not. You hope yeah. not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I find myself when my kids were little and my grandkids would say, you know, we got to have some fun once in a while. Yes. But we mm -hmm. get so, moms and dads, get so wrapped in that I got to have everything in a row, everything's got to be just right. Yeah. But sometimes it's so hard to see, what do they say, to uh, the whole purpose that you came into the swamp was to drain it, but you're surrounded by alligators, <laughs> yeah. right? But the whole purpose is, of life is having kids and relaxing and having fun, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's difficult to do that. And, and I think you gotta take care of yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You gotta take yes. time to take yeah. care of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, it's, uh, one, and sometimes in my parent lectures, I pull out an oxygen mask. Yeah. An, air, an airplane yes. yeah. oxygen yeah. mask, because yeah. what do they say uh, the flight attendants right. say when you yeah. get on an aircraft. Yeah, put your mask on first. first. Yeah. Yeah. And then the child. Good lesson. Yeah, how the heck are you supposed to take care of another living, breathing right. human being, yeah. a challenging yeah. one, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you can't even, you're not even taking care of yourself? Yeah. But thank goodness they tell us that, because I think as parents, you know, moms, dads, 
you think, well, I want the child to. Your instinct could be to get up. So like when it's you're a good driving, thing somebody reminds us to yeah. take care of ourselves first. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's sometimes it's so hard because the parents that we had modeled behavior that was we don't take care of ourselves you got to take care of somebody else first right and our moms did that a lot they had mm -hmm. to take care of our fathers and and all the kids and everything put always put themselves last so we have to be careful about what we're taking carrying forward That's from right. our parents yeah. right yeah, absolutely yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, moms are on, on, on such the, the, the spot, they just really need to do a better job because not only is it important to recharge the batteries, but the kids are watching. Mm -hmm. And how do you expect them, right? We want them to grow up and make sure that they yeah, know how to take right. care of themselves. Mm -hmm. right. So you gotta realize that that model you're creating is a lasting legacy. And you mm -hmm. want your kids to go, you know, mom every once in a while just took some time out for her and I'm gonna do that as well. Well, uh, I'm gonna ask you to stay on. We got another segment coming up and we've got more to talk about, so hang in there. Parenting isn't easy and it's difficult to do it all alone. So how can parents support each other with this difficult job? My guests have some suggestions that may interest you, especially if you're a single parent. Don't touch that remote. We'll be right back after this short break to hear what they have to say. <laughs> 